mais, hein? LaDonna Ray on the LaDonna Ray Show, and I'm here tonight with our special guest, Raul Thacker. He is not just Raul Thacker. He is actor-comedian Raul Thacker. Y'all give it up for him. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Raul. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So, Raul, you know, th there's it's time to spotlight what you've been doing because I know that you were originally from Illinois, but you have actually made your way around the country quite a bit. I want everyone yes. to know, uh, you know, tell us who you are as a comedic actor. Um, who I am as a comedic actor. That's not a uh, trick question, by the way. Well, that's a very vague question. What do you mean by who am I? Okay. So basically, this is where uh, if someone and, and I'm preparing you because you're going to be interviewed again and again and again. Yeah. And if somebody yeah. asks you who you are as a comedic actor and let's say there's someone from Saturday Night Live in an elevator, you got about 30 seconds to tell them who you are as a comedic actor. So let me try. Let me try. Raul Thacker. Uh, is a comedic actor that is of Indian descent. And the reason why I mentioned that is it's for real, because you told me, you shared with me that it's been difficult for you to actually hone in on your craft because of your ethnicity and your yes. culture more so, because you got two sides working against you. You've got family that says, hey, uh, well, you're supposed to be like a doctor by now or a pharmacist or a lawyer, an attorney. Or and then you have yes. society, comedic society saying, eh, he, you know, that's Balky. That's that's you know, we don't we need another American looking comedian for this role. There's not a lot of roles for uh, someone of your culture. So you have had both of these things kind of collide throughout your career. And, and who you right. are is someone who persevered and jumped over that hurdle and made it. And made it. Thank That's you. who you are. And I know that was more than 30 seconds, but I had to tell it like it's his. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And you know, the funny thing is, is that um, in cinema nowadays, people are still fighting for diversity. Mm -hmm. It's still, it's still not, it's still looked um, overlooked shall I say, it's still overlooked. Um, and even even in Texas, you know, a lot of auditions that I go to, it always says Caucasian, open, and then it also says open ethnicity. But then when I audition, it makes me think, well, you really want open ethnicity? Or is that just something you're putting on there? And yeah, you're going in and out. You're in the matrix, but I'm going to kind of repeat what I think you said. And that was you go to these auditions, they say open ethnicity. And when you get there, they're looking for someone that's Caucasian or black. Did you say or black? I didn't hear that part. I I said they're looking for someone who's of a who's not of a different ethnicity. They're looking for the typical norm, basically. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Typical norm, it, meaning black or white. It's not black or white. Entertainment is not black or white. Right, right. Yeah. And and even, you know, even in the, um, I don't mean to badmouth my home city's industry, but even in the Chicago industry, you know, it, it is very one way or another. You know, there's no in between. There's no, like, like if you walk down Michigan Avenue, you'll see a plethora of different, you'll see Skittles all over, you know, you'll see, Asian people and black people and you'll it's a variety of colors. It's a Baskin Robbins and Michi on Michigan Avenue, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Baskin Robbins, 31 flavors, but not 31 cultures, basically. Exactly. It's not what what Chicago is made up of. Uh, did you know that Chicago is still one of the uh, most segregated cities ever in the world? 
you know, to me, segregation, it's not about, um, let me rephrase it. It's about the people, how the people choose to adapt to other culture, mm-hmm. you know? Um, are we willing to, as a society, to learn about other cultures, to learn about other races, to learn about other religions, even if it's different as yours? Mm-hmm. Are we willing to come together and say, hey, um, teach me teach me this, or I want to try some Indian food. What do you recommend? Or I want to try some soul food. What do you recommend? I, I try and be adaptive to all cultures, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I've had soul food. I've had pierogies, which is a Polish appetizer. Polish um, appetizer. I've you had Asians, all kinds of Polish ethnic. appetizer. Yes, I've had all kinds of ethnic friends. So I think as a society, even the film industry, you know, we have to take it upon ourselves to learn about other cultures, learn about other races. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what brings the world together. It you does. Know, the world is... The country isn't divided because for the sake of being divided, it's divided because people are not learning about other people are not making the effort to learn about other other people. Yeah, they fear what they don't know. You know, so you just you you become the uh, the opposer, you know, if you will. But I remember when I met you back in 2012. And back, that was a long wow, it's time been ago. That long. It has been that long. We met 11 about, years. Wow. Yeah. It's been a long time. Um, but almost, almost 12 years because we're going into 2024, but watch this. When we met, I remember how frustrated you were in being, uh, just trying to pursue your dream. I remember the frustration and you and I would talk, we would have these talks where you would talk about how deep talks, they were very deep. And it was, it was mainly about how, unfair it was or is still when it comes to let's just say Bollywood and I feel like we got to kind of watch our I don't got to watch my words okay Raul one thing I like about talking to you I don't have to watch my words I, can I say know you I mean, mean well that's yeah, it right you know where I, I know where your intentions are so so that's exactly. that you know exactly. it doesn't matter exactly but I think that we don't give a fair shake to all ethnicities as it as it stands because even right. with a black actor you have to fight to not play certain roles because we were pigeonholed in Mamie roles and, you know, Buckeye roles and the comic relief roles. We weren't considered for other roles. And now that has evolved and let's not even get on the light skin, dark skin thing. So uh, with that going on in our own culture of, our, of, its, of itself, I, when I spoke to you, I could relate because I remember when my mom was trying to get me into the industry of acting, they they wanted they told her straight out, blue eyes, blonde hair, and it's like. But see, it's funny you mention that because nowadays your employers look just like you: Tyler Perry, Spike Lee, Lee Daniels, and a plethora of other Shonda Rhimes. They all look like you. Mm-hmm. They're your employers. They can employ you. I wish they were my employers. I'd have more money in the bank. But go ahead. But but but, but that's what I'm saying. You have studio execs that look right. like you. Where right. are my studio execs? Where are my employers that look yeah. like me? You know. But it goes back to if your family is telling you where's your where's your why aren't you in this field? Then you're kind of like you're you're not the norm. You're not the norm because no. there's not a lot of. There's there's not as many, I should say, Indian descent people in, in the entertainment industry. There are. They're just there, there's a lot, but I'm just saying it's not we don't see that. Yeah. Right. Definitely. So, so how do you change it? By creating your own content. First of all, first and foremost, I, I creating heard that somewhere. I, I'm not gonna I'm not yeah, I'm not gonna pat myself on the back. I, I heard that somewhere in a conversation we had years ago. But go ahead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Controlling your own narrative. Um, that's the biggest thing. Um, also, not fearing change. Mm-hmm. Not fearing change and not, not having fear of, okay, my people are going to think of me this way if I dabble into this. Or 
you know, taking taking big risks, mm-hmm. so to speak, networking, um, joining forces with other cultures and other races and just collaborating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think I would go with, you know, creating your own content and possibly creating your own platform. Uh, just recently, Byron Allen offered to uh, purchase BET. And BET is Black Entertainment Television, which is owned by Viacom, parent company Viacom, which is under Disney. I think I have this right. And when he made the bid, uh, him and Tyler Perry, they did not accept the bid and decided we're not we're not selling anymore. Okay, if they were to purchase BET, do you know how powerful that would make them in owning that platform, that network? And then you turn around. And there's a, I forgot the the gentleman's name, but an Asian guy placed a bid for lower than theirs and they're willing to sell all of a sudden. So you've got certain people that don't want you to have certain power or position in this industry and many other industries. Mm-hmm. And it's unfortunate. It is. It is. And I think part of that is, see, there's still a lot of prejudice going on in this world that we live in. A lot of prejudice. Or and, racism, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And at the end of the day, we're all we're all the one and the same. Mm-hmm. We're, we are all one and the same. We cry when we're emotional. We bleed red. We jump up and down and scream when we're happy. Well, I do. I don't know about you. I was going to say, that might just be um, you. Um. <laughs> We're all the same. And I think uh, to really make splashes in any kind of industry, film industry, music industry, whatever, everyone has to stick together. And everyone says, has to say, you know what? This has to change. Let's change it together. Yeah. Well, uh, Raul, tell us where you are now in your career, because uh, I was so. I was so relieved when I spoke to you recently um, when you said, I am in a happy place, you sounded more calm. You sounded like you were on the side of a beach drinking a Mai Tai. I mean, you were just so relaxed, but also so focused and sure of where you were headed. Um, tell us where you are. Tell us what it took to get you there in a short sense, and then tell us where you are. So... I went through a lot of mental hurdle, a lot of mental anguish. Um, basically, I basically I come from an environment that is if you don't have a degree or you don't have X, Y, and Z, don't have kids, don't have that meet that status quo, mm-hmm. you're irrelevant. Um, and after I lost my father in 2020. I just wanted to start a new chapter. You know, I didn't want to be around the negativity. I wanted to control my own destiny. Mm -hmm. I didn't want my destiny being predicated on other people's point of view. So I went to Dallas last year for three months, tried it. Then I went to Atlanta and now I'm back in Dallas and I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm doing well. Mm -hmm. Um, Although being an artist and choosing uh, choosing that profession, you know, you're going to have to constantly battle the up and down of, of not not knowing when the next check is coming. Um, but at least I'm doing it myself. And at least I don't have to answer to anyone. And I am following my following my path in life. I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. But well, I'm, I'm as happy as can be. I, I love hearing that, you know, uh, looks like Craig S- Satofsky, um, and I said it wrong because I've interviewed him. I know I said it wrong again. Craig Satofsky. There we go. Just say Craig S. I want to say Craig S, but I want to get it right. He says, Merry Christmas, and I want to say thank you. But he also said, nobody laughs or cries in a different language. That is so true. We all mm-hmm. laugh and cry in the same language. Now, some people's laughs are pretty annoying. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, like I do comedy, and I and I see a lot of audience members whose laughs are annoying, but they're laughing, yeah. so it makes a person feel good that yeah. they're still laughing. Yeah, I um th- through laughing, there's a lot of pain. Like for me, I've done comedy three times in my life, so I've done stand up comedy three times in my life. Um, I got paid for two out of three. The first one was free, of course, but uh, I always wanted to. I always made people laugh, but I never saw myself as being a comedian. But I know that I can be a really good comedic actress because the roles that I've had where I'm supposed to be a comedic actor, I do well in. That's just who I am. However, mm-hmm. I don't like hanging in the backstage of comedy shows and saying, put me on. So I'm kind of bougie with it. If you call me, I'll be there. <laughs> right. <laughs> so and that's probably why I've only done three shows. But, well, if I make if I make it to that plateau, yeah, you're going to be and you you're going to be one of the people who is like working out deals in backstage for me. Oh, wait, working out deal. You, you're not going to put me on stage. You want me working out the deals? I can't get on the mic. Okay. I got you covered. <laughs> I got excited. Like, okay. <laughs> but here's the thing. I, I want to, I know that there's, even in being a, a comedian behind the laughter behind what you, you make other people. Do. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of pain. A lot of yeah. pain. There's a lot of for pain. me. It was. So um, all my pain that I was going through before my dad passed was very hidden. You know, um, it was very hidden for the sheer fact that um, I was, you know, I was, Trying to live, like I said, I was trying to live other people's lives and working those, working any kind of job I can find and coming home, doing the same thing the next day. Mm-hmm. And then coming home, then doing the same thing the next day. I felt as if I was living for other people. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel as if I was living for me internally, you know? And then I told myself one day that life is too short. Life is way too short and you got to follow what you love to do. So then I started auditioning more. I started doing more stand-up comedy and I, I couldn't find the joy, you know, that I had. That is why I was so miserable because I could not find the old Rahul that you knew was able to find the humor in everything, every situation. He was able to find the humor, you know, uh, and I just even if it was offensive, I'm. I remember you had some offensive humor, but it was. I knew where it came from. Yeah, so I it came wasn't from offended. A, <laughs> yeah, it came from yeah. a good place. Right. And after he passed, I just could not find that humor anymore. And you know, if you take away that humor from a comedian, mm-hmm. he ends up miserable mm-hmm. and depressed. So that's how I was. And then I started going to more comedy clubs and more comedy clubs, trying to find my humor. And then I hung around other comedians and I was like, wow, these comedians are messed up in the head, just like I am, (laughs) you know? And, and it's like my whole life I was surrounded by, excuse my verbiage, but kind of fakeness, you know? That's the verbiage you want me to excuse? Say it again. Fake. I was surrounded by, I was surrounded by fakeness. Yeah. Um, and then I went from that to being surrounded by comedians who just did not give a you know fine what? toot and okay. said whatever the heck they wanted to say. And I was like, you know what? That's me. This is my family right here. Comedians are my family. Artists are my family. Yeah. So that eventually brought back my happiness. I'm glad. I'm so glad. It's like, you know, I want to, um, I didn't want to take you through this is your life, but I know from whence you came. And I'm, I have to say that I, I say, I say to myself, the people that I know that started from the beginning and I see them now, I'm really proud. I am Thank so you. proud of you. Because I have a lot. You didn't give up. You, and and even if you needed to a friend to call, you you had no problem calling. You know, same thing with me. I knew what I was going to get on the other end. 
I knew it. It was, you know, it wasn't, yeah, it's not like I, oh, I don't know what, what's, go- I knew what I was going to get on the other end. It was going to be a genuine person. Yeah. Thank you. You know, there was a time where I did feel like giving up. Um, and we've had discussions about this. Yeah. Um, I have, I did feel like giving up and, um, I don't know. I, I'm just so glad I went, I went to India. Huh? I'm so glad you didn't give up. <laughs> yeah. And I went to India and I just, I made, I made the choice to just change my life. Started meditating, started reading books, started using positive words, mm-hmm. um, not exhausting words. Um, started just changing my, my circle. Mm-hmm. And things just started happening, taking big risks. Yeah, but there, but I, you know, I did have my moments where the demons, the demons were winning, so to speak. Um, but I think the spirit of my grandmother wanted me to fight, and believe me, I fought, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I won. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Congratulations on winning. I love it. I love it. I love it. So right here on the LaDonna Ray show, you know, I'm your host, LaDonna Ray. And I'm, I always want to talk to content creators and people who are doing stuff in the community and not just stuff. You're know, moving the needle, setting the path, setting the tone, opening doors, kicking them even. That's that's big. And a lot of times people, there may be someone that's watching you that looks like you that wants to do what you do. And they're afraid because mom and dad are like, look, you're going to be that mathematician, that scientist, that that astronaut, that Mm -hmm. that doctor, that lawyer. Life is is too short. Life is too short. Follow your dreams um, because you never know. Mm -hmm. You never know what can happen. Follow your dreams. Your parents mean well. They love you regardless. Yeah. But. Follow your dreams. You you know, we, we live in a world where people would rather chase money and be miserable than be happy but have less money. And I told myself, I'm like, you know what? I For my whole life, I chased all the money and working these corporate full-time jobs, and I wasn't happy. Mm-hmm. For what? For chasing money? You know? It's like I'd rather be happy and have less money in my bank account then then do what my purpose isn't you know well that's because you don't have two kids pulling at you talking about they need new shoes um (laughs) because my kids are like i need i need but well you're absolutely go ahead well those kids need to have a lemonade stand and learn how to bust their butt for that money or do some kind of paper route or something might be right they're getting jobs i like that yeah I like some that kind idea. of paper what paper route or lemonade sand or something kid appropriate yeah i like it all right that's a good that's a thought that's definitely a thought uh i want to say to you thank you so much for coming on the show we have a couple of uh comments out namaste. here yeah ja- namaste um I have Jeremy Coulter says evening, evening, governor, evening. And he also said, never give up, man. LaDonna's always giving it real and supporting creatives. Thank you so much, Jeremy, for that awesomeness. All right. So, Raul, you were talking about following your dream. How can we follow you? Follow me on Instagram at Rahul, which is R-A-H-U-L. Thakar, T, which is T H A K K A R 77. That's Rahul Thakar 77. Rahul Thakar 77. I can never hold a tongue like that. Rahul. Yes. Not Rahul. I ain't Hispanic. Okay. I've been calling you Rahul for 11 years. Well, you never time, corrected time. me. Time to change. <laughs> but yeah, Rahul Thakar 77 at G. Why am I saying at Gmail? Rahul Thakar 77. Raul, 
Thacker uh, on social media Se- platforms. <laughs> Make sure well, you follow. Thacker 77 on Instagram, yes. All right, cool beans. I know you did a show on Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving week. That I was, did. Uh-huh. Yeah, tell us about that, and then we're going to get you out of here. Well, it was um, it was called Leftover Laps. It was a stand-up comedy show that I produced with my friend Ron Bloom. Um, we basically tore the night out. Mm. I wanted to be there. It's our, yeah. It was our first Thanksgiving without my grandmother, so... I was kind of, oh. you know, here with the family. Sorry for your loss. Yeah, thank you, dear. Um, but you know then, how close I was to my grandmother. I remember. You were very close to your grandmother. And I don't even want to, I don't want to bring the mood down because that was a tough time for you. And I do recall. I've, yeah. honestly, I, I have moved on. I think it, it's been a long time. Um, and the trauma that I suffered Mm-hmm. It's fine, you know. And mm-hmm. she's the one who motivated me to op- basically I, I opened up my production company and named it after her. Yeah. Um and she was my biggest motivator, my biggest fan. Your biggest and, fan. And I, I, I think kids nowadays, you know, I I believe kids who grow up with um their grandparents Mm -hmm. a part of their lives significantly grow up to be amazing human beings Mm -hmm. amazing human beings Mm -hmm. yeah yeah all right rahul (laughs) 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 fuck thank you so much for being on the ladonna ray show you're welcome to come back anytime man make sure you guys Follow this man. It's Rahul Thaka. Uh, what was the numbers? I didn't remember the numbers. Rahul Thaka 77. That's it. 77. 1977 was a good year. No, I wasn't born in 1977. I didn't say you were. I know you were. I'm July 7th, so that's 7-7. Seven, seven. I got you. I got you. Well, it was a good year because of one of my really good friends was born in 1977. I was paying tribute. Oh, she's oh I thought you were calling me old. No. <laughs> Mm. What? That's not old. I thought old. you were calling me old. That is not old, okay? I was born around that time. Anyway, uh, thank you so much for being on that. That show. wouldn't make me 46. I'm not 46. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Um, you know what, wrote? Get off my show. <laughs> You're talking about being old. You know not to say that to a woman. <laughs> no, no, no. I thought you were calling me old. I'm not calling you old. I thought uh, you were calling me old. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm not. I'm not. All right, guys. Make sure you guys follow this gentleman. Uh, make sure that you follow us and subscribe to our show on YouTube. And that's the YouTube. I'm sorry, the YouTube. YouTube.com forward slash LaDonna Ray Show. Okay, hit the subscribe button. Make sure that you subscribe to us so that you can get the notifications of the guests that we're going to have. Some guests that we've had previously will be coming on again. I want to pay tribute and have you guys talk about what you want your great, great grandchildren to know when you are still here in some way, form, or fashion, right? But this will be a conversation where they can really learn. Come on, LaDonna, dance. You know I will. You know I will. Chicken, 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 chicken. Wait, 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 Raul. Did you subscribe to my YouTube channel? Dance. Chicken, chicken. Uh, you know what? You need to subscribe. I now will. I will. You, do it now. Okay, then, I will. Then I'll start the music again. My goodness. <laughs> okay, I will. All right. All right, guys. Make sure that you can, you can call in live on our shows now, too. 312-357-5141 when you are watching us live now. Uh, and you can comment live as well on YouTube and Facebook. Make it rain! Make it rain! Thank you so much for watching. All right, Rahul. We'll see you next time. <laughs> yeah, I love him. I love him. I love him. All right, guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button uh, on uh, YouTube. It's over here. There you go. On YouTube, you look for youtube.com forward slash LaDonna Ray Show. That's R-A-E-H. Um, and I'll see you next time on the LaDonna Ray Show. Bye-bye for now. Peace. Well, it'll be this way. Peace. There we go. <laughs>